Most people love their supplements, and it's understandable since they are marketed as something that will provide great results with little to no effort. But of course, since the supplement industry is not regulated a lot, you usually have inferior products hit the market which are ineffective to say the least, and most people usually end up basically purchasing expensive urine. I am also personally known to spend large time periods where I do not use any supplements whatsoever, and the main reasons for this are simple. I don't have a health issue so I use supplements as insurance policies occasionally. No, this does not mean that I am an 85 IQ individual who consumes 900 supplements just because nutrients are good. My nutrition is dialed in. I'm not exposed to a lot of toxins. I do not have a genetic mutation that would call for supplementing certain nutrients whether these are vitamins, minerals, or amino acids. But right now, I use some supplements in extremely low doses and frequencies, and obviously certain supplements can have some benefits after certain prerequisites are met. But before we talk about supplements, let's talk about some foods that you should get before even thinking of buying these supplements. Beef heart, pasture-raised eggs, brewer's nutritional yeast, grass-fed beef gelatin, quality seafood, quality red meat, quality dairy, Evo red palm oil, quality seasonal fruit, glyphosate-free bee pollen, coconut water or organic potatoes, and whatever folate source you find easy to digest. Now, someone might be wondering why beef heart and not beef liver or kidneys, for example, or why Evo instead of certain seeds. Because the point of the above list is to cover one's micronutrient needs in a balanced manner. You can add more foods to the list, obviously. Now let's talk about my supplement picks, but keep in mind that these were chosen as general supplements so to speak. The top 4 supplements I'd choose for fertility, gut issues, libido, liver health, kidney health, brain health and so on, would probably be a bit different. You get the idea that in general, the supplements that will be beneficial for someone depend on their unique situation and goals. Also, keep in mind that any supplement can be problematic for some people. Let's say for example that just 1,000 people read this, just 1,000, and if you see the views you will realize that a lot more probably read it. So, out of these 1,000 people, it is mathematically impossible for someone to not react badly to one of the supplements mentioned. It also is mathematically impossible that there's not a person in here who doesn't react badly to a particular food that can be very beneficial for someone else, for example. Anyway, here are the supplements. Number 1, Magnesium. You probably expected this one since magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in our bodies, assists more than 300 enzymes, enzymes, not enzymatic reactions, these two are different things, to carry out various chemical reactions in the body such as building proteins, strong bones, oxidative phosphorylation, glycolysis, blood pressure, muscle and nerve functions. It also acts as an electrical conductor that contracts muscles, makes the heart beat steadily, plays a role in the active transport of calcium and potassium ions across cell membranes, it can help you with increasing free testosterone, support the balance of neurotransmitters, help you with managing intracellular calcium in our NNEMF-filled world, and it's important in general. Now the form of magnesium that will be best for you depends on your goals and current issues. I can't recommend citrate or Epsom salt baths, for example. To a person who is struggling with histamine issues or threonate to a person on SSRIs. The safest one usually is glycinate. The forms that I personally like the most are glycinate and taurate. Number 2. Fulvic acid and humic acid. You can also use a quality shilajit for these two. Both of these are humic substances that are found in the humus of soil and thus contain trace minerals and polyphenolic compounds that all of us use to get through our food before our soil got effecated. Now if you are going to pick one of them, go with fulvic acid especially if you are struggling with issues such as fatigue since it's smaller than humic acid and can thus go in the cell easier and serve as an electron donor for the mitochondria, which is partly why it's such a great antioxidant. It also of course contains a lot of minerals, can bind to heavy metals, and maybe even graphene oxide, prevent tau protein accumulation but even help with leaky gut and the immune system by reducing the release of things such as coax 2, TNF-A, and PGE2. Disclaimer do not overdo it, problems will be created. Number 3. Modified citrus pectin or since it can be expensive, zeolites. 
Everyone these days is operating suboptimally due to toxin accumulation and one of the worst but very common mistakes someone can do when entering his health journey is to underestimate the impact that toxins have on our health. While topics such as nutrition are becoming more and more mainstream, topics such as detoxing are still considered almost conspiratorial, and for valid reasons a lot of the time to be honest, but toxins such as heavy metals have a bigger and faster negative impact on our health than dietary toxins, and if you've struggled with them, you know that this is true, so it is an undeniable reality that we're exposed to more toxins than we've ever been through our food, personal care products, household items, clothing, and even the air we breathe something which is hiding behind a lot of health issues. And of course it is not hard to understand why this is the case. For example, certain yeasts and fungi for example are known to feed on mercury as a protective measure. They absorb the mercury until it can be released in an organic form. And besides this, mercury antagonizes selenium which is crucial for hypochlorite. Certain heavy metals such as cadmium can displace zinc which is crucial for our immune system, reproductive health, hormonal health, and can also reduce PPRs and CYP4A11 and negatively affect our PNS and CNS. Lead can negatively affect the bones since it's very similar to calcium, and this is also how it partly negatively affects acetylcholine and the hypothalamus. Other heavy metals have a high affinity for sulfhydryl groups and can inactivate COMT. All heavy metals will increase the formation of ROS and almost all of them induce apoptosis in the neural cells. Mercury can lead to anxiety since it inhibits glutamate reuptake and lead can also lead to issues such as anxiety and even oxidize LDL. Aluminum can lead to fatigue since it decreases the concentration of magnesium in various parts of our bodies and even the spinal cord. The negative effects that xenobiotics like BPA have on the liver is a common reason for high levels of SHBG. Arsenic is known to harm oxidative phosphorylation and various mitochondrial enzymes. All of the toxins mentioned here will negatively affect the citric acid cycle. If you combine the effects that mercury and halogens have on selenium and iodine, then thyroid issues are of course to be expected. And the list can go on and on. So we are inarguably exposed to a ton of toxins, and a binder is always helpful. Other binders such as activated charcoal can be used as well, but if you have gut issues and are mineral depleted, that's not the binder you want to start with. Number 4. Taurine and number 5. Glycine. We can get some of our daily needs for these two met through dietary means, both of them are such a jack-of-all-trades type supplement. Plus, if you can't consume fish or gelatine, these two will be probably needed in the long run. When it comes to taurine, it is crucial for bile salts maintaining proper electrolyte balance in our cells, it's heart protective, great for male fertility, great for improving insulin sensitivity, great for improving fatigue without messing GABA, great for liver health, great for our eyesight, great for brain health, great for kidney health, pretty effective when it comes to undoing some of the damage that easily oxidized fats can do, this is also why I'm not a fan of fish oil but eat fish, and is a TLR4 antagonist. When it comes to glycine, it's great for our skin health, acts like an antioxidant, is crucial for our gut health and our nervous system, protects the liver, supports energy metabolism, protects against muscle loss, lowers stress hormones, protects the adrenals, supports LH, DHT, and lowers excessive serotonin. In the same category as glycine and taurine, lactoferrin could also be added where, of course, things such as raw milk and colostrum contain lactoferrin, and you can choose them over a supplement, but lactoferrin is also a jack-of-all-trades type supplement regarding fertility, gut health, liver health, and iron homeostasis. So it's in general a great tool to promote the growth of certain probiotic strains. While inhibiting the growth of pathogens, it can also help our immune system, bones, address unbound iron, and help with bile metabolism, among other things.